Hey, LinkedIn, it's Hayes Walter here. Um, today, I have a conversation with an old friend of mine, Ben Regal. Uh, ben was a past client, and now Ben has started his own organization called RCM Leaders Forum. Um, ben is a, an expert uh, throughout the land, no doubt about it, in the revenue cycle. And because what's been going on with the virus uh, nationally, I kind of wanted to kind of take his pulse and kind of hear what Ben has to say about what's happening and what he's hearing from some of his clients. And so with that, Ben, uh, welcome, and kind of give me a little in, uh, insight of what you're hearing. Well, thanks, Hayes. I appreciate it. Yeah, to say the least, you know, things have changed drastically in the last six weeks. Uh, we had a, I held a town hall on Friday and just invited RevCycle leaders to join and see what people are dealing with. You know, and I had people from all over the country. So Boston, New York City, you know, everywhere. And obviously it's much different in different places. Just to talk about even just metrics within RevCycle, um, let alone uh, what's happening on the staff side. But I would say the biggest, most drastic thing right now is because most of the groups, most everyone's experiencing 75 to 85% outpatient volume loss almost overnight. And, um, and so what that does on a couple fronts is that the staff working can't all be reallocated. And so we're seeing kind of just, you know, they're having to make decisions about layoffs and, you know, all those things. Uh, so that's some, certainly something that, you know, I wouldn't have predicted. I don't think anyone or even people really understand that, uh, you know, there's, a, there's an over, we don't have enough ICU nurses our beds, but we had we don't but we have this oversupply of all those other things where hospitals are just getting crushed on cost, and so RevCycle is obviously on the you know the crosshairs of that. I just had a friend, my good friend, yesterday get let go, and he's the VP of RevCycle. You know, and they thought, well, we're going to have to cut costs, and we're going to have to manage it without him. And I, I mean, I can't believe it. I mean, that's like I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought that, but I think what we're seeing is just leaders in very difficult times kind of sometimes making short-sighted decisions but also having to make the decision to do something like that so i think in rev cycle it's very uh i think tenuous right now people are a little bit not sure what's going to happen uh interestingly like a lot of you know groups have been able to work down their ar <laughs> so um, a number of uh, the hospitals reported that they are seeing they had a really strong march um, for cash, which was not expected. But what I think is happening and what everyone was perceiving happening was that they were, you know, they were running down a lot of the AR. And so getting to a lot more accounts that they probably wouldn't have because there wasn't the influx. And, um, and so that's a temporary thing. And so what's most likely happening is the days are coming way down. And so the stockpile of accounts that you're expecting to get cash is becoming less and less. Um, I foresee April, May, June potentially being really not good uh, cash, bringing in actual cash for the hospital just because of they don't have a backlog and they don't have the same, um, they don't have any kind of near or the same volumes. And so a number of our number of our people are talking about, you know, a simple air days calculation, which is kind of classic in, right. you know, rev cycle. Uh, the way you calculate that is you'd usually do a 90 day rolling average of revenue, right? So you take your revenue, gross revenue on a 90 day basis. There's these groups are taking 14 days, seven days. Cause they're, cause you can't go back 90 days. You can't go back 60 and they're saying you can't even go back 30. Not relevant. I mean, I've never even heard anything like that, nor would I have ever thought we'd even, you know, have to contemplate that. So that's, so I think that's kind of the what's happening right now. Ben, do you see um, at whenever this ends, which could be 30 days, 60 days or whatever, do you feel like a lot of that um, elective surgery is going to kind of roaring back or what, what are they hearing? What do you think about that? Yeah, it's, it's going to be a capacity issue. And I, I would say that the challenge is going to be that it's not going to be a one for one. So you're not going to be able to get all that back overnight. So you lost it, you know, in a very short amount of time, but can you, can you get it back in six months? Like, I don't know the answer to that. So uh, I think a lot of people are predicting that it was going to, you know, be somewhat revenue neutral over the course of time. 
at least this year. And I don't know if that's true. Like I, I could say that I'd say that, uh, yeah, there's, there's definitely, I know an orthopedic surgeon friend of mine has got 200 cases waiting, but he can't put those 200 cases in tomorrow, even when it's, you know, they got the green light. And so, you know, you just, you just, you think like, yeah, hospitals should be planning for the future. They should be planning for how they're going to be able to take all that volume in because there will be a backlog for sure. A huge backlog. And what I'm concerned with is some of those people who needed that elective surgery, be it a total hip, total knee, they might not have insurance or a job in the next six months. Therefore, they're not going to get that procedure done. And therefore, the hospital, to your point, is probably not, is not going to get that uh, revenue back. So that's certainly a concern. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, how has this impacted you personally? And uh, also, obviously, why don't you tell everybody kind of what you do now and maybe how they can get hold of you? Yeah, so I, I started and run a forum of RevCycle Leaders. It's something unique. Um, actually, I took a lot of the stuff I learned from IHS and Hayes and I <laughs> used it. Um, and it's in a, in, a, in a different way, but a similar way of like trying to keep it um, – uh, small and intimate. And um, so I keep it less than 50 people. You know, we have two meetings a year and uh, try to get the best leaders in the country and RevCycle together, basically. And, and so we had one coming up in the end of May and that got canceled. I just canceled it two weeks ago or a week ago. And uh, so that, yeah, so impacting me is significant, you know, as a small business owner, as you are, you know, mm -hmm. I think, you know, we're all just trying to like get through this period. Um, but yeah, so I've, I've tried to do some other things. I'm doing like an academy, um, teaching people rev cycle on the sales person level. So doing that virtually. And so I'm doing some of that stuff. And then, um, obviously we're doing our forum and we're going to do our forum in the fall, um, in Scottsdale. We moved it back to Scottsdale, um, in November. And so, yeah, I think people can get a hold of me through LinkedIn, um, or you can even join our town hall if you're on RevCycle and you want to hear what other people are dealing with. Um, town hall Fridays at 4 p.m. Eastern, and you can message me directly for the Zoom information. And so is that for providers and suppliers in Revenue Cycle for the town hall on Fridays? Yeah, it's open to anyone. I'm trying to keep out creepers, but <laughs> it's open to anyone. No, you know, no sales pitch, I, but that's our whole thing. Anyways, leaders forums thing is a whole, you know, no sales pitch. We're trying to do no sales environments. Um, but yeah, it's, it was great. Friday was our first, of, you know, first call and we had 17 people on and we were, we were sharing ideas. This time we're going to focus on metrics and talk, you know, some a couple of providers are going to bring what they're doing around days and some other calculations because the old calculations don't work. Exactly. Everything's like predicting cash, like right now, I, I don't even know how a CFO would be predicting cash. I really don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm not so sure you can. Well, Ben, thanks again for joining us today. I mean, again, this is to me, this is just an easy, light conversation, but I, it's a great insight because, again, you're talking to um, virtually all the leaders around the country in revenue cycle. So um, we'll be in touch. And uh, when things change, maybe when uh, the market and uh, the virus kind of goes away, we'll have you back on and talk about yeah, that'd be great. that's happening. But thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Hayes. All right. Take care.